Hi, I'm Cisco with Acrobotic and I'm here to share with you another tip for working with your ESP8266 microcontroller. In previous videos, I showed you how to get a web server running on the ESP8266 and how that web server was able to send full on HTML web pages in response to requests by web browser. The pages included a form and button elements that allowed users to click on a button and toggle an LED on and off. To avoid a couple of shortcomings in my implementation, today I'm going to show you how to add JavaScript to the HTML code so that number one, I don't have to refresh the entire page when the button is pressed, and number two, so that the page itself can display the status of the LED. I'm going to be using the code I set up on the previous video as a stepping stone to add the JavaScript code to the HTML page that will be sent when the browser requests it. The first thing I'll do is download the tips and tricks code from my repository. I'll put the link in the description of the video. I'll go ahead and open the web server HTML file. And I'll save a copy that I'll name web server HTML JS. I'll start by changing the SSID and password to match my network. Next, I'll go to where we define the HTML that will serve as the web page. I'll get rid of the form element and using script tags, I'll add the JavaScript that we're going to need. When the button is clicked, I want a function to be called into action. I'm going to use JavaScript to define that function. Just to ensure that everything is working, I'll start with a little message sent to the console by using the log method. Next, I'll instantiate the XML HTTP request class so that I can create an object that will allow me to use a synchronous JavaScript to send a request to the server. If this doesn't quite make sense, I want you to go ahead and follow the link in the description to learn a little bit more on how Ajax works and how JavaScript works. I'll leave this variable open because as you'll see in a little bit, I'm going to create a new path that will receive this request. I'm going to use the onready state change method to define a function that will be called into action when the button is pressed. When that happens, I'm going to find an HTML element in the page so that I can change the text that is currently displaying to indicate the current status of the LED. I'm going to use the open method of the XML HTTP request class so that I can define the method, the path, and that is going to be an asynchronous request. And lastly, I'll use the send method to actually send the request. One last thing I want to add is an event listener so that this function runs whenever the page is loaded. Please note that this is not compatible with every browser out there, but at least for right now, it works. I'll need to add the element whose text is going to be displaying the state of the LED. And I'll simply use an inline span element to do so. I'll leave the initial state blank so that we know 100% of the time that things are working correctly. The ID, as I specified before, is going to be LED state. And that's about it for 
the HTML and JavaScript code that will be sent to the web browser. Now we need to make changes on the web server code so that whenever the button is clicked, it responds accordingly. The first change I'll make is the path for when we're serving that web page. I'll use the root path instead of the toggle that we had defined in the previous video. Next, I'll change the toggle LED function to just toggle the LED without sending a response back to the web server. Next, I'll define a new path that I'll call LED state that whenever access, it's going to call a new function that I'll call get LED state. I'll define that function. The first thing it'll do is actually toggle the LED state by calling the function toggle LED. Next, I'll define a string variable that I'll call LED state that will hold for the duration of the function the actual state of the LED. I'll use a ternary operator in order to get a string instead of a boolean. However, remember that the logic of this LED, the built-in LED in the board, is reverse. So whenever digital read is low or zero, then the LED is going to be on. So we put the string on here and vice versa for off. Lastly, we're going to use the send method of the server object to send back the actual string as a plain text. As I explained in the last video, we'll also need to change the send method to be send underscore p because this variable is defined in flash memory. Lastly, this will be the path where that Ajax request will be sent. So we're ready to test things out. Let's connect the board to the USB. Remember that to get the next step going, you need to set up the development board as we did in a previous video. We'll go ahead and use the tools menu to select the port as well as the board. Then we can upload the code. I'll go ahead and open the serial monitor to get the IP address of the ESP8266. Make sure that the bot rate is 115.200. Use my web browser to access that web address. Notice that right off the bat, I see that the HTML has been replaced as I would expect. We defined it as underscore underscore, but because of the JavaScript, once the document was loaded, my function was called, and because of the state of the LED, that string was changed to off. Then, if we press the button, the LED turns on, and the actual HTML turns to show the current state of the LED. We try one more time and once again. We can inspect the page to see a little bit what's going on behind the scenes and we see that the onclick attribute is calling my function so whenever the button is clicked my function is called and that span element changes from on to off. And there we have it. We've combined JavaScript with the HTML that we're serving in the web page to number one, avoid a full web page refresh, and number two, so that we can dynamically display the state of the LED. If you like my videos and want to support the channel, I invite you to visit my Patreon page and consider chipping in, anything helps. But whatever you do, don't forget to like, subscribe, or leave me a comment. 
Also, if you want to follow me on social media, you can find me by the same name of this channel under Acrobotic. Until next time.